Tokyo Rave. about um, some ghetto slang, some words that can be found in the ghetto language. I've been asked multiple times to um, make some videos about teaching Japanese. Uh, the thing is that there are already so many um, you know, YouTube uh, channels where they teach you Japanese and I don't really have to offer anything uh, different. And besides, I don't think that teaching you know, a language is really fun. Uh, for me. Um, however, I can make this video and um, you know teach you some of the uh, you know the words found in the ghetto slang language, um, which you maybe you know you can use for fun or whenever you are in Japan and you know you meet a ghetto or something. Um, let's begin with the most famous um, term found in, in the ghetto language. Um, which is age or age poyo. Now, um, I think many of you who are interested in ghetto already know um, what this is. Um, the word started out as age, and you use it when you're happy. So it's like the equivalent of ureshi. So whenever something fun happens, you say age or Age poyo. The reason they uh, sometimes say age poyo is because poyo, they put it after the age um, so that it sounds cuter. Um, now, the egg model Kanako always used to say uh, age, yumachi as well, by the way, but um, at a point they started to use the word age poyo because it sounded more cute, and um, probably many of you saw the uh, YouTube video. Um, which they promoted when they went to um, Finland, where they explained a little bit about age poyo. Um, the word age comes from um, the word agaru, and agaru means means to rise. So you use age when you know your happiness, your tension rises. Um, and the negative equivalent of that is sage, and sage is um, from the word sagaru, uh, which uh, means to de decrease, so you know, when your happiness decreases, you say sage, or even sage poyo. Now, I never use those words like age poyo or sage poyo, um, simply because I think that the poyo behind it is actually kind of weird, it makes it sound a little girly or something. Um, you know, if you say sage, you know, that sounds like, oh, you know, shit, <laughs> I'm not happy, but if you say sage poyo, that, you know, it's a little weird. Um, so that those are the two um, most famous ones, also in the West. Uh, we go now to um, some more uh, unfamiliar. Uh, also, some of these words are very unfamiliar with uh, regular Japanese people, so don't use them uh, you know, when you're hanging around with regular Japanese people because they probably will not understand what you mean. Because uh, gyaru have an equivalent as well uh, of the word kawaii. So if something is cute, uh, they describe it as um, something moe. Now if you are uh, interested in anime or manga or stuff, uh, you will probably know what moe is. Uh, you know, the, the cute feeling that you get, uh, ultimate cuteness, that kind of stuff. Um, if something is cute to a gyaru, they say onimohe, onimohe. Um, the truth is, I, ever, uh, I never uh, actually uh, heard a gyaru um, use this term, um, you know, when, when speaking to me or 
when I was in Japan. Uh, I saw it in a video. I will post the link of the video where some of these ghetto terms uh, are also used um, in the description below. Uh, there with uh, egg models. So if you're interested in uh, also some egg models, um, <clears throat> please check the video out. Now the problem that I have with onimohe is that onimohe is is a weird sounding word. Kawaii, you know, means cute, but the sound kawaii is also quite cute. The word onimohe is a little weird. I I don't know why, but I I, I keep thinking of um, the term anime when I keep hearing uh, onimohe. Uh, a girl from my class even said that it sounded uh, Korean. Um, you know, uh, what it exactly means, where did it come from, I, d I have no idea. Um, like I said, uh, Japanese people also don't know this term. Uh, I asked my conversation um, sensei and uh, she never heard of Onimohe before. Um, then we go to the next term, um, which is Jidori. Jidori um, is a mixture of the words jibun, which means um, you know yourself, and tori, which is from the word toru, um, from um, taking a picture. And what it uh, basically is is the uh, you know the kind of pictures that you know not only get by but you know many um, you know Asian girls take. They they get their cell phones, put it in the air, do like lips like this, fingers like this, and then take a picture. And it's not really, it's not that pose that is necessarily, but, um, you know, uh, you, you often see that pose um, in the Jidori pictures. And so, um, taking a picture of yourself is uh, Jidori. Uh, up to the next word is uh, Aikata. Uh, aikata um, already has I from love in it. And it basically is something that you hold there or someone. Um, you know that that, that you love. Um, in the video that I, uh, you know, post below, um, they ask that question to some of the egg models. And for example, um, Aina, uh, the egg model Aina, uh, says that her beloved um, thing is the uh, JSG brand. Uh, and for example, Kanako, uh, you know, loves the um, uh, Jack Skellington character. Um, Yumachi loves the guy who she's married to, um, so it's not only concerning things, but also people you love very much. So that is Aikata. Alright, up to the next one. Um, this one is actually kind of unfamiliar with me, but um, apparently a lot of Gyaru or Gyaru use it, and it's um, Moretteru. Now, Moretteru is the equivalent of Kakui, so cool. So, for example, if you say uh, 髪の毛 もれてる um, then you mean something like, whoa, your hairstyle is pretty cool. Um, there are other equivalents of もれてる. I don't know exactly, no, I think もらる, but I'm not quite sure on that. But もれてる um, has the, um, you know, the same meaning as uh, kakui. You also use it. Uh, when you think someone, you know, is cooler than you are or something like that, you know, it's pretty much to praise um, uh, a guy uh, or a girl. Because if you are a guy, uh, it's uh, immediately the same equivalent of um, uh, of kakui, of cool. And if you use it um, with a girl, it is the same equivalent of cute. So you can use it for both uh, ghetto and ghetto. Now the last one I want to talk isn't really uh, a ghetto term, I think, but it is um, worth mentioning because I um, noticed that Kanako um, keeps referring to herself as Uchi. Um, now she's the only one who does this, so I don't know if it's really a um, you know ghetto ghetto slang or ghetto term, but um, it, it, it was um, worth mentioning because. Um, it actually makes sense to use that term uh, in, in terms of grammar because if you are describing in Japanese things about your own house, you use the word uchi and the same word as kanako uses. So she refers to herself as her own house. And if you are mentioning someone else's house, you use the word otaku. 
So that's also probably where, you know, the, the otaku term, you know, the nerd term came from. Maybe because they, I don't know, that they sit, um, you know, inside their ho their homes all day or something. I don't know the history of, uh, you know, the otaku word and coming up with that stuff. Um, but the main thing is that if you're talking about your own house, you use uchi. If you're talking about someone else's house, you use otaku. So, um, in that... Uh, you know, regard, it makes kind of sense that she uses that uchi, even though it is very weird that, you know, she refers to herself as, you know, her house. Um, but I don't know, maybe some, some big fans of Kanako will also adapt that. Um, you know, you have some pretty hardcore Kanako fans in um, Japan, and they will probably adapt even the way she speaks. So those were some uh, terms used in the Gyada language. Um, and I uh, hope it was fun, and I hope to see you guys next time. Alright, see ya.